Doctor Who, the classic series action figures History Returns for two final instalments. It's been a while due to a rather chaotic academic year, but the series is finally back to complete the aim the series started out with a number of years ago, looking back on the classic series action figures of years gone by. In part 15 of this series, we pick up from where I previously left off, looking back on the variants within the B&M exclusive line. From the summer of 2019 onwards, we start to see a progression within the series, becoming more adventurous with variants, introducing new smaller components in sculpt, as well as whole brand new head sculpts. In today's episode, lots of classic TARDIS exterior boxes, and the exciting release of the big finish, Dr. Dalek 2 packs. The rather large popularity of the Talong's Wen Chiang Tom Baker from the B&M range of 2018, character options decided to focus solely on the classic series within the B&M 2019 range, as I think they noticed at this point that that is where their main buyers are coming from, the classic figure variants. Therefore, the B&M 2019 range, as we all know, seen a massive amount of classic series action figure releases, starting out as usual with your regular B&M 3 packs. Firstly, we have the Sontaran Collector Set, featuring re-releases of Field Major Steyr from the Sontaran Experiment and Lynx from the Time Warrior. However, more importantly, the release of Harry Sullivan, the Fourth Doctor's Companion, featuring a brand new head sculpt. Steyr and Lynx figures of the set give fans of the series their opportunity to once again add two rather popular Sontarans to their collection. Using exactly the same sculpt as the original Forbidden Planet exclusive releases, however this time round with a few paint revisions. Now I think that the Lynx figure in particular for this set is not as good as the original because as you will all know if you've seen when I covered the Time Warrior set I absolutely loved that sculpt and this version of very toned down is much more grayscale and quite Quite a lot of that detailing is now gone, however it's much more basic in its design. The Steyr figure less so, I just look rather similar to the original version. As for the body, this is pretty much exactly the same to your other Sontarans, featuring a few upgrades in the paint application, and naturally the helmets are also included with your usual eye slots, however this time round Steyr has been upgraded to have a darker grey helmet, Link's helmet as usual is a rather shiny silver. The main focus of the set and the figure that everybody wanted is of course Harry Sullivan and that is down to the fact that this is a brand new figure essentially, it is at least a brand new head. The rest of the figure is of course quite obviously the season 12 fourth Doctor in his Dovel coat that we've already covered within this series. A brand new set of paint taps including a lighter orangey yellowy Duffel coat does have a pretty decent likeness to that of Ian Martyr. The second three pack of the B&M 2019 series is of course the Two Doctors set featuring the second Doctor as an Andragum, Perry, her fourth variant, this time round from the Two Doctors, and Group Marshal Stike, and very much like Harry Sullivan, it's the main focus that everybody wanted due to a brand new head sculpt being made especially for this set. The second Doctor figure of the set does have a few variations compared to the 13 Doctor set version of the second Doctor, and of course the most obvious difference being the inclusion of those very bright orange eyebrows. Perry once again features an upgraded series of paint taps, including a much more tanned appearance, and of course the use of the Caves of Androzani sculpt, now painted to be a very 80s and glittery unusual shirt piece. Of course the bottom of this figure remains exactly the same sculpt to all of the other Perrys, using a very similar colour palette to the original Vengeance on Varos Perry, and including some cream high heels, unlike the original figure that were of course a vibrant red. Another inclusion is of course the Caves of Androzani head, now painted with a headband over the top. Dyke once again uses exactly the same classic series Sontaran body, however with a few updated paint taps. The elbow and knee sections have now been removed to include a bronze stripe as opposed to having the padded sections. The communicator has also received an upgrade having a blue panel which is normally painted silver and of course most notably the inclusion of the brand new sculpted head to look like Stike from the Two Doctors which features a nice amount of detail and an equally nice paint application. Third and final triple 
pack of 2019 is the Seventh Doctor Collector Set, also known as the Silver Nemesis Collector Set. Seeing a new variant of the Seventh Doctor in his cream jacket, as well as the re-release of the Forbidden Planet exclusive collector set from Silver Nemesis, featuring the Cyber Leader, as well as a regular Cyberman that was originally released in 2010. The seventh Doctor of the set actually features some really nice upgrades and paint taps, and I especially love the much more vibrant cream that has been used on the jacket. And as per usual, the sculpt of the rest of the detailing on the clothing is also rather nice, including the hanky and the scarf, as well as the chin, which has been painted gold, which is inaccurate, of course. And then we have the inclusion of the non hatted, most serious head, a few upgraded paint taps on the previous versions, a nice figure, and a decent variant. The Silver Nemesis Cybermen are exactly the same sculpt to the original versions, retaining exactly the same rather stunning detail. This time round, they have been given a brand new paint application to make them look more like the chrome appearance that they had within Silver Nemesis. Patch options have gone with the shiniest silver paint they possibly can get on a plastic action figure, and to be honest, it gives a nice appearance and certainly works well. Other than that, the figures are exactly the same to that of the original versions, featuring the nice detail detailing on the boiler suit, the inclusion of the guns, as well as the really lovely detailing on the handle sections. Certainly a worthy pickup if you haven't got the original set, and if you have, it's a great opportunity to army build. After the success of the previous B&M TARDIS releases, the summer of 2019 seen not one, but two classic series TARDIS boxes. The first of which being the fourth Doctor and TARDIS from Sharda, of course the Barry Newbury TARDIS exterior, and the second being the fifth Doctor and TARDIS from his final story, The Caves of Androzani, and the TARDIS box being designed by Tom Yardley-Jones. Now both of these TARDISes are rather exciting because they don't just see a re-release of the pre-existing sculpt, but they in fact see a retool. Most notably, of course, the Barry Newbury TARDIS features a brand new base, cut down and made to be a much flatter compared to the other TARDIS box releases, and of course also includes a brand new lamp sculpt. This does also continue onto the Tom Yardley Jones prop for the Fifth Doctor era. Once again, this is a much thinner design, creates the illusion of this TARDIS box being much different from the original version. TARDIS does once each other the black base and the lighter blue along with a wash applied over the top of this, along with updated signage, these very unusual reddish and yellowy windows, which are a little bit over exaggerated and inaccurate it has to be said, along with an updated police public signage one returning to the black backdrop and the thick white text on top of this. And of course, the most exciting element of this new TARDIS was the brand new retooled light, to now feature a silver base along with transparent blue top lid. The fourth Doctor of the set is a reuse of the City of Death sculpt, this time sculpted with a black plastic on the coat and of course an updated scarf to be much more vibrant and appealing to look like the scarf as seen in Sharda, as well as other episodes including the Invasion of Time. The fifth Doctor TARDIS, rather excitingly, is the first B&M re-release to in fact feature the 8T stacked roof, which is a welcome addition to the collection for those people who didn't manage to get the original Forbidden Planet exclusive version. Much like the Barry Newbury TARDIS and all the other B&M re-release TARDISes, this set does feature brand new and updated signage, light blue background and a white text added over the top, and the signage as well as the rest of the box has been given a nice dark wash of paint to make it look battered and weathered. This is incredibly effective, especially on the bottom section of the base, as you can see, and this lighter coating of paint, as well as the addition of the pull-to-open sign and the windows, also having the wash applied over the top. And as for the Fifth Doctor figure of the set, exactly the same sculpt to any other Fifth Doctor. However, as you will know if you've been following this series since its very beginning, one of the earliest figures released was of course the Sixth Doctor Regenerated. So it is really nice to finally be able to have a Fifth Doctor Regenerated to accompany that very old figure. And naturally, of course, this is the Fifth Doctor's costume, with a few weathered paint taps added over the top, and the extensive mud splatters added to the left-hand side of the jacket. The colour scheme of this figure in fact follows a very similar colour palette to the 5th Doctor as featured within the 13 Doctors set. 
It is in fact worth noting at this point in the video that if you haven't guessed already, this series has been a massive project and in fact at the current time of filming to give you an impression of how long this project has in fact taken to put together, these products are in fact brand new out at the current time of filming. I literally just finished filming the product reviews of these exact sets along with the other B&M exclusive collector sets around a week ago. That is the amount of effort that has gone into the creation of this series and naturally at the current time of filming I am very excited to see what the next B&M releases bring. No doubt another classic series TARDIS and fingers crossed it's a Sixth Doctor variant. Probably at the current time of watching this you may in fact know, I may have in fact even reviewed it, who knows but I just hope we see more classic series TARDISes to come as these variants are incredibly promising. The excitement of the B&M 2019 exclusive releases doesn't stop there as we do also have the release of the brand new Dr. Dalek Big Finish character options collaboration collector sets. Now these were incredibly exciting, the first ever proper Big Finish action figures. This set of course featuring the 8th Doctor in his Dark Eyes Doom Coalition and Ravenous Blue Leather Jacket outfit alongside a Dalek Interrogator Prime from the Time War series. This figure does of course use the head sculpt of the Knight of the Doctor, 8th Doctor, this time round with a darker paint application on the hair, and of course the rest of the body is just directly using that of the Ninth Doctor body, even though inaccurate to the Dark Eyes costume, and we can't expect the B&M series to make completely brand new figure sculpts, I'm completely surprised to see brand new head sculpts, let alone an entire figure, however I think for what it is it works quite well, the black leather jacket has now been painted blue, and we have the inclusion of the golden buttons and of course at the very bottom the denim trousers and of course the brown boots. We have the Dalek of the set being the Dalek Interrogator Prime from the Time War series. Now I was in two minds whether or not this is something to include within this series because although it is a classic series action figure it is a part of a big finish box set that isn't classic. It is in fact released in the 21st century however I've decided to include it anyway. It is of course a 2005 bronze Dalek sculpt, the slimmer variation, the more modern version and this time painted in a much different paint tap, including a dark blue and a silver, which does look rather nice and very different to your other new series Daleks. The last classic series set of the B&M 2019 exclusive line is of course the 7th Doctor in his darker brown outfit alongside the Axis Strike Dalek from the Big Finish Gallifrey series one. The 7th Doctor is an unusual one because it is a variant of his costume that is meant to be the 7th Doctor apparently from Doctor Who the movie, of course the 8th Doctor movie from 1996. However of course that costume did look completely different to this so we're just going to kind of call it a later era version of the 7th Doctor. Much like the 7th Doctor from the Silver Nemesis set, this 7th Doctor does once again feature the more serious non-hatted head sculpt, has been given a slightly updated paint tap on the hair with a grey highlight added over the top to give the impression of ageing. Of course the actual costume itself has seen a major upgrade which is now completely unrecognisable from the TV costume. We have a light brown jacket along with a red handkerchief as well as scarf section which is exactly the same colour as of course the jumper underneath that was of course once the question mark jumper along with a brown tie, a very unusual checkered trousered design. Although a little bit inaccurate to what is seen within Doctor Who the movie, it's still a nice inclusion to the collection and a nice variant nevertheless. As for the Axis Strike Squad Dalek, much like the Dalek Interrogator Prime, the base figure is of course the modern series 2005 bronze Dalek, has received a brand new colour scheme. This time round overall it has a much darker or bronzy shade of colour along Along with black hemispheres. We also have a slight update to the bronze midsection, exactly the same detail to all of your other new series bronze Daleks, and we do also have the inclusion of the black dome. A nice variant and an interesting one, and will look very different on display next to your other bronze Daleks. Released ever so slightly before the original run of Big Finish Dr. Dalek 2 packs, we also see the release of a special series of variants exclusive to the Big Finish website. They were only available to order together as a bundle and were limited to around 150 units, selling out in a matter of minutes. They are very similar to the original versions already covered as a part of this series, but do feature some differences, the most obvious being a giant Big Finish sticker on the front packaging plastic. Starting 
off with the Seventh Doctor and Axis Strike Squad Dalek, the Dalek is exactly the same to the standard release. The Seventh Doctor has an ever so slightly darker jumper. The Eighth Doctor and Dalek Interrogator Prime also features some minor changes. You see black shoes compared to the regular brown on the original release, and the Dalek now features a white iris on the eye stalk compared to the usual bloom. And since we've not covered the War Doctor exclusive release on the channel as of yet, briefly talking about the War Doctor collector set, even though it is a new series release, the War Doctor is exactly the same, however the Dalek now sports silver slats compared to the regular bronze. These changes are very minor and borderline unnoticeable. When the first releases came out, I initially was rather frustrated at missing out due to how limited this run was, and undoubtedly there will be big collector's items in the future. Hey ho, you win some and you lose some. And let's face it, it's not like that we're going to see these Daleks again anytime soon for a third release now, are we? Hmm. And that does of course conclude the B&M exclusive 2019 Classic Series releases. A very interesting year of B&M exclusives, certainly upping the bar of opportunity to see more B&M exclusive Doctor Who action figures in the future. And a very creative set of figures as well, considering that for the most part it is using pre-existing parts from other character options action figures. And of course, due to these figures being released in 2019, reviews of all of these sets are available on my channel in detail. Well then, here we go. The year is 2020. It's not particularly a year that a lot of people would want to revisit anytime soon. However, to the extent of Doctor Who Classic Series action figures, we start in rather familiar territory. As once again, as a part of the B&M exclusive series, we have the release of the 8th Doctor and Dalek Interrogator Prime, and of course the 7th Doctor, along with Axis Strike Squad Dalek. Are you having a little bit of deja vu? I certainly am. These two sets, as you can see, are virtually exactly the same at first glance compared to that of their 2019 counterparts. This time round we have a few updated paint apps along with of course a brand new head sculpt or at least a brand new head applied to the 7th Doctor. It wasn't a part of the original collector set. These two sets were also released alongside a third set which was of course the War Doctor alongside Dalek Scientist which also received a number of paint upgrades. A noticeable difference is this time round the 2020 version is a much more vibrant bloom compared to the darker blue used on the original 2019 version as seen on the left. As of course for the hemispheres, slats and the dome of the Dalek on the original 2019 version these were a prominent silver and then on the 2020 version we now have a much toned down silvery blue tinge added in there on the hemispheres, slats and the dome. On top of this there has also been a wash applied to this version of Dalek which is also present over the bloom which was very much prominent on the original Dalek as well, having a light brown wash. And as for the 8th Doctor, a very similar set of circumstances where at first glance we basically have exactly the same figure. The most noticeable difference is this time round we have a lighter paint application on the 2020 version which is seen on the leather jacket. This does also seem to be a slightly more yellowish tinge that has been applied to the paint application on the buttons compared to the original 2019 version it does seem to be a darker leather jacket and more bronze style buttons. As for the trousers, these once again look virtually identical. However, from what I can see with the 2020 version, the paint application overall does seem to be ever so slightly lighter, and the rest of the figure does seem to be pretty much the same. To be quite honest, these collector sets are the ones for the people who either missed out on the 2019 versions, as they were highly popular, or simply those collectors who want an ever so slightly different figure to add to the shelf. It's really nothing to get too excited about, and it is some very minor changes. Moving on to the 7th Doctor collector set now, we have the Axis Strike Squad Dalek. And again, a very similar upgrade in paint application compared to that of the Dalek Interrogator Prime. And let's face it, if you've seen anything throughout this series, is that Doctor Who fans basically will buy endless versions of Dalek variants, regardless of what the differences are, because by this point, we have absolutely tons of them. This time round, the most obvious difference is a general darker bronze colour that has been applied to the overall 
overall body of the Axis Strike Squad Dalek compared to the much more lighter bronze seen on the original 2019 version. The other obvious difference is of course on the 2019 slats we have a yellowish bronze paint application. On the 2020 version a silver paint application has been made to the slats instead and of course we have this wash that has been applied over the top much like the Dalek Interrogator Prime to give the impression that this Dalek has been through the Odd War or Tomb. I love both Daleks, I think the paint application and colour scheme is lovely, however to be honest I actually think that this time round the 2020 version does win because the overall contrast between the darker bronze and the silver of the slats looks a lot more visually appealing compared to the 2019 version but this is still a lovely Dalek. And finally, for the big finish interim sets, we turn to the Seventh Doctor, which is arguably the most exciting figure of the interim sets so far, because it sees the most amount of change. The most obvious being, of course, the reintroduction of the smiling Sylvester McCoy head, along with the hatted head sculpt, one of which that was seen as a part of the Forbidden Planet exclusive series, of course, which did debut within the Remembrance of the Daleks collector set, alongside an Imperial Dalek. However, up until this point within the series, it has not been seen as a part of the B&M exclusive line, as all of the previous 7th Doctors have used the serene non-hatted head. So that is of course the most obvious difference, this does feature a few upgraded paint taps from the original Forbidden Planet exclusive version, generally exactly the same, you know what to expect. We have some further paint application changes, which to be honest, in the early months of 2020, I was happy to purchase this set again, even though for the most part it was exactly the same set that I had purchased only a number of months previous, because this makes for a rather effective variant. The most noticeable change is of course within the jacket, it is now a much darker brown compared to the lighter seen on the 2019 version. Equally, we also have a similar paint application change with the scarf, the woolen jumper, and of course the handkerchief poking out of the pocket, all of which have now received a more burgundy paint application compared to the red seen on the 2019 version. Paint application change with the pocket watch chain which has now been painted as silver compared to the usual bronze that is seen on the vast majority of 7th Doctor figures and what I do believe is in fact correct and more accurate to what is seen within the TV show itself. The shirt once again painted white and of course the tie with the light brown and black stripes which is pretty much the same from the original release. Then moving down to the trousers, to be honest, once again we have a paint application change that is rather similar to that of the 8th Doctor, where it's not really that noticeable. We have the same blue and grey checkered design, and we have an ever so slight change in paint application on this. I do believe this version here is ever so slightly lighter. So there we go, that is that, the B&M exclusive Big Finish Collaboration Doctor Dalek 2 packs, and that is of course not to forget that these aren't the only variants that were released as a part of this series, there was also the Big Finish website exclusives, which were again ever so slight variants, the likes of the 8th Doctor having black shoes as opposed to brown shoes, so not particularly vital and for the most part virtually the same to the original releases. More importantly though, however, the 2020 interim sets did provide provide a further opportunity for people who missed out on the original 2019 versions to get some action figures similar to the 2019 releases. For those collectors that did purchase those 2019 versions, it allowed for an opportunity to get further variants of Doctors and Daleks that were ever so slightly different to those original sets. Some of the improvements were decent and some of which were worth adding to the collection and others were kind of just figures that you add to the shelf which weren't particularly too exciting. But overall, a decent C Series, and one of which it will be good to see returned to at some point with maybe classic Dalek sculpts with classic series Doctors as opposed to new series Bronze Daleks. The B&M interim series of early 2020 didn't only see the re-release of the Big Finish Doctor Dalek 2 packs, but did also see the release of a further TARDIS exterior box variant, this time round the third Doctor and TARDIS from the 1970s story The Monster of Peladon. Now regardless of this set's contents, it would always have a little bit of sentimental value for me because this was one of the final products that I purchased, if not the final product that I purchased, prior to the events of COVID-19 and the UK lockdown. I bought this product on the last ever journey I made prior to going home and essentially being locked in the house 
for several months, so it's not necessarily the happiest of memories. However, it's one that will definitely be one of the most striking events within our lifetime. It's definitely something of which that we won't be forgetting any time soon. In a rather similar manner to that of the Big Finish Doctor Dalek 2 packs, Monster of Paladon 3rd Doctor and TARDIS is a variant of a variant released as a part of the B&M series in summer of 2018, as here we have the original 3rd Doctor and TARDIS already covered as a part of this series. And again, of course, we have exactly the same sculpt used for the 3rd Doctor, and of course the TARDIS at first glance is rather similar to that original variant, but have some noticeable yet subtle changes. The most obvious change for the 2020 Third Doctor TARDIS is of course within the lower half. Now rewind to 2018, there was only one sculpt that was used for the base of classic series TARDIS exterior boxes, and that sculpt is the sculpt that we see here that has been painted black. The 2020 version, we have the introduction of the new much thinner base that was of course originally used on the Sharda 4th Doctor TARDIS, and of course the 80s 5th Doctor TARDIS box, and that base has been utilised on this sculpt and it has been painted blue to coincide with the rest of the box which is also a lighter blue. Some think that it's rather difficult to compare on camera because both of them do look exactly the same. However, to the naked eye, there is in fact an ever so slight change. As on the 2018 TARDIS, there is a lighter blue paint application that has been used on the TARDIS box overall. On both of the releases, a wash has been applied over the top. As we can see on the original 2018 Third Doctor TARDIS, a rather black paint application has been used to bring out some of those wood texture details. 2020 version, the wash that has been applied over the top is much more of a lighter brown and is ever so slightly less obvious. Once again, this does vary between the different boxes. Another ever so slight change is within the pull to open signage. On the original 2018 version, there was a blue banner running around the side and of course the signage itself was a much thinner typeface. 2020 box, we, ha we now have a black border running around the side and the typeface itself used on the signage is in fact ever ever so slightly bolder. Also seen on the 2018 Third Doctor TARDIS is of course the roof signage. This follows a rather similar style to the vast majority of TARDISes, having a black background and a white typeface over the top with a wash over this. The 2020 variation of Third Doctor box, we have a police public call box signage variant that is rather similar to the Season 12 Fourth Doctor TARDIS, including a white background and a black typeface with a wash applied over the top of this. And the final major change is within the lantern at the very top. On the original 2018 TARDIS, this was sculpted in a black plastic. However, the 2020 version returns to the colour of the rest of the box being a lighter blue. As for the third Doctor of the set, once again it is a little bit of déjà vu because every single third Doctor uses exactly the same sculpt and we've seen this figure time and time again with numerous different costumes, but that is not to say that this third Doctor is not a good variant, it is an absolutely lovely variant, however because we've seen this sculpt so many times before it's not particularly too exciting, but it is still a very worthy addition to the collection, especially if you're a third Doctor fan. As stated on the packaging for the product, the Third Doctor is now sporting a bottle green blazer which has been painted a darker green. Equally, the frills of the jacket in the very middle have been sculpted in the frill design with of course the bow tie at the very top. We do have the paint application on this of the rather familiar mint green with a dark green highlight running around the side and through the middle to represent the inner lining of the frills as well as of course the buttons running up the middle of the sculpt. We also have the inclusion of the bow tie which has been sculpted in a standard black plastic. Of course, the Third Doctor action figure has also seen a series of different paint application changes over the years, and I'm happy to report that this figure returns to a rather similar set of paint applications that was seen on the original Forbidden Planet exclusive series, which generally overall look a lot healthier compared to some of the other Third Doctor figures we have seen in recent years as a part of the B&M series, mainly that one with the blue jacket from the Invasion of the Dinosaurs that was released alongside Joe Grant and, of course, the Roger Delgado Master. This time round we have a yellow wash that has been applied to the top of the hair, a rather intricate design that has been applied to the eyes and the lips, which again look rather natural.
I must admit, when this Third Doctor and TARDIS set was originally announced, I wasn't that excited by it. I'd just seen it for what it was, another variant of the Third Doctor TARDIS that we got a number of years ago that virtually isn't very different. But now that I have this set in hand, the Third Doctor is lovely, and by far one of my favourite variants of the Third Doctor that we have seen over the past few years. And to be honest, the TARDIS overall is also visually nicer looking compared to the original version, as generally it looks more consistent. But that is of course it for the early 2020 interim B&M exclusive sets. Now we fast forward to summer 2020 to take a look at some new companions to be added to the classic series line, some brand new faces, some more classic Daleks, and of course you guessed it, yet another classic series TARDIS exterior box. I think that one of the most exciting things about the B&M exclusive line of Doctor Who action figures is that for the first time in quite a number of years, we almost have a schedule of releases every single time the summer comes around. We are almost anticipating a brand new line of variants. As per usual, the summer of 2020 did fail to disappoint as we got to see more classic series variants, and you guessed it, another Doctor and TARDIS collector set. This time round from the 1960s, featuring the second Doctor from the War Games, using exactly the same sculpt from what we've seen before, along with a re-release of the Second Doctor. However, much like the Barry Newbury TARDIS, we do in fact get to see a brand new variant of Lamp. To be honest, the second Doctor action figure of the set isn't really anything that exciting. If you've got the previous second Doctor action figures, you know exactly what to expect from this release. The most notable differences is that we now have a vibrant red handkerchief that has been painted onto the jacket, and the shirt in the middle of the outfit is now a vibrant white, as opposed to the lighter blue seen on the previous releases. As per usual, the bow tie is a darker blue base colour, along with the white polka dot applied to the top, and as for the likeness to Patrick Troughton, it has in fact been painted surprisingly well with sharp detailing, which does in fact look rather similar to the original release way back at the beginning of the line many, many years previous. A personal favourite difference for this action figure is that we now have a wash that has been applied over the top of the jacket, really emphasising some of those details and the creases and wrinkles within the large pockets at the bottom of the jacket itself. As per usual, the second Doctor does feature your standard checkered trousers. There has in fact been a wash that has been applied over the top of this, and a rather unique detailing that isn't present on any other second Doctor action figure is that we now have the paint application of a small tear that has been applied to the knee of the trousers, replicated using a dark paint application. And now we move on to the TARDIS exterior box, and it is a little bit of same old, same old. We've seen a lot of these TARDISes already, and it is a rather unusual release. I really do feel like I should like this TARDIS, because it is rather strikingly different to some of the others on the shelf. However, there's something about the colour palette which just doesn't sit right with me. It's kind of like a grayscale TARDIS. Of course, the most notable difference is that this time round we don't have a shade of blue that has been used on the plastic of the TARDIS overall. It has, in fact, been sculpted in a darker grey plastic with a wash applied over the top of this to really bring out some of those wood texturing details. Bottom we have the inclusion of the thinner base seen on the vast majority of the TARDIS releases and we do also have a few edits to the TARDIS box overall to make it look ever so slightly like the one as seen throughout 1960s Doctor Who and the initial Peter Bracracki prop. As for the pull to open signage, the base colour of this behind the text has now been painted the same colour to correspond with the rest of the box, and we do have the silver highlighting as per usual on the handle and the lock. We also have a wash that has been applied over the window panes, and once again, the frame of this has been painted exactly the same to the rest of the TARDIS box. My personal favourite thing with this TARDIS I absolutely adore, and something of which that hasn't been present on any of the other TARDISes, is that we have a variation between the different sides of the TARDIS box. So that's as we can see, we have a light background that has been used on the front of the box and a black text with a wash applied over the top of this. And then on all the other four sides, we have the inclusion of a darker colour to correspond with the rest of the box and a bold white text that has been applied over the top of this, which is accurate to the classic series of Doctor Who. I really do like this touch. The most exciting sculpting difference is that we now have an inclusion of a brand new lantern at the very top. As per usual, the base of this is exactly the same to any other TARDIS. However, the rest of the frame has been sculpted in a clear plastic with some paint application over the top of this. To give the impression of struts at either side along with the lantern lid at the very top. It works well and it sets this TARDIS apart from some of the others on the shelf.
it's an all right set, although it's one that I still feel to this day not particularly too excited about. Perhaps it's the second Doctor because it's not particularly that much of an exciting variant compared to the likes of the Monster of Peladon third Doctor. Visually it looks very similar to all the others. Likewise the TARDIS is also all right, however again it's not particularly accurate to what is seen for our actual 1960s Doctor Who, but they've definitely tried to make it look like the TARDIS from that period. So an all right set if you are a fan of 1960s TARDIS box. I assume that no doubt we'll probably see another variation of this prop at some point because character options and B&M seem to absolutely love TARDISes. It will be a fair statement to say that by this point with actual options are definitely running out on TARDIS variants that they can do. So as a result we have a brand new range that has been released in B&M for 2020 and that is the history of the Daleks collector sets. I assume that these sets will no doubt eventually replace the Doctor and TARDIS sets and it makes for a great opportunity to army build classic series Daleks and in particular for these sets we have two Daleks added to the shelf which are now considerably rare. Originally released as a part of Dalek collector set 1 from the very early days of the line, as well as in Dalek Sound Effects Range Wave 2. So the first set, History of the Daleks Set 1, is from the 1963-1964 Dalek story from the first Doctor era, The Daleks. Of course, if you want to know more about these Daleks, go and check out the full-length review that I have done. However, in summary, basically the silver sections are now more metallic compared to the original release. The hemispheres are now an ever so slightly different shade of bloom. A weathering wash has been applied overall to the base of the Dalek. The dome lights are now, in fact, ever so slightly more frosted and the eye stalk now features an ever so slightly smaller white pupil on one of the Daleks and the other one has the wider white pupil much like the original release. Of course, the most notable difference being, and never seen on a Dalek before, we now have the inclusion of these two little dashes that have been applied to the back of the Dalek to represent their numbers as seen throughout the story, something of which that was done in production to make directing easier. A lovely touch and really showing the fact that this is a collector's item with these obscure little details. Released alongside the first set, we also have History of the Daleks Set 2, this time round from the first Doctor 1964 story, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. This set features some striking differences as we have a drone Dalek this time round, packaged alongside the Saucer Commander Supreme Black Dalek. Now both of these Daleks have been released previously within the range, the drone Dalek was of course originally released as a part of Sound Effects Daleks Range Wave 2, and the Supreme Dalek is a considerably rare release, originally a part of the San Diego Comic Con range of 2009 released alongside the first Doctor. Much like the first set we do have some ever so slight subtle changes, however do look very similar to the original releases. In a very quick summary, the Supreme Dalek now features a wash on the fender that wasn't present on the original release. The hemispheres on the skirt are now an ever so slightly darker bloom, as well as the silver sections once again being a little bit more metallic compared to the original release, as well as a silver paint application being applied to the bore joint. We do also have an ever so slightly smaller pupil on the eye stalk, as well as the frosted ear dome lights as per usual. And overall, the black of the Dalek is now ever so slightly more shiny compared to the matte paint seen on the original release. As for the drone Dalek of the set, very similar changes to that of the Dead Planet Dalek, where the silver sections are now more metallic. We have the silver on the ball joints, as well as the wash that has been applied to the skirt. We also have an ever so slight paint application to the eye stalk, now featuring a black band, and of course something that also applies to the Source Commander. We now have an ever so slight change in colour and plastic, used on the unique disc present on the back of the Dalek midsection, that isn't really present on any other Dalek throughout Doctor Who history. The introduction of the history of the Daleks collector sets to the B&M exclusive series is a very exciting opportunity to add some classic series Daleks to your action figure collection if you are somebody who has started collecting in recent years. Of course all of the Daleks featured throughout these sets are Daleks that have previously existed within the line, however have been released a number of years ago and as a result have gone on to be considerably rare. For those of us that have picked up those original releases, yes these Daleks are a little bit same old same mould, however do still feature some subtle changes to maintain the rarity of the original releases. And not only that, of course, due to this series going in order of Dalek serial, it means that by the very end we will be able to have an entire timeline of Daleks throughout Doctor Who history on the shelf at an affordable price of only £19.99. Of course this series is also a perfect opportunity to army build, which has been something that was previously considerably expensive to do. 
And with that, that concludes part 15 of this series. Join me next time for the 16th and final part, which will be a one-hour special, as we continue to look at the classic figures of 2020, which, spoiler alert, may contain TARDIS variants, classic companions, and the release of a Dalek we never quite expected to see. However, until then, thank you for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.